from some very interesting exoplanets all the way to satellite imagery of very real volcanic explosions that happened right here on Earth. Here is part two of the top 10 unsettling things discovered by space satellites. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Van Allen radiation belt. The Explorer 1 was the first satellite that was launched by the United States, and of course, right off the bat, we were finding some unexpected, slightly unsettling things. Launched on February 1st, 1958, this satellite was the first to discover the Van Allen radiation belt. Basically, the radiation belt is a zone of charged energetic particles, most of which originate from solar wind. These particles are captured and then held around a planet's magnetosphere. So while other planets can and do have these belts, Earth has two main ones, but sometimes others are created temporarily. Basically, these belts help to protect our atmosphere from destruction, so we like the belts. But when discoveries like this one happened, it reminds us of how dangerous space can really be. So NASA launched some space probes that were meant to specifically check out the belts, and in 2013 it was reported that the Van Allen probes had discovered a transient third radiation belt. This third belt was observed for just four weeks until it ended up being obliterated by a powerful interplanetary shockwave from the sun. How terrifying is that? Left just as quickly as it came. Thankfully our main two are still intact and that really is all we can hope for. In our number nine spot today we have TESS. New data from NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite is showing that it has been able to discover 5,000 objects of interest. The list of objects has been growing since 2018 and in the last year alone it has increased by 1,600. Here's the thing about this list of objects of interest though. They're of interest because they are thought that they might possibly harbor some kind of alien life. Whether it's the smallest, most primitive forms or something more, it's all exceptionally interesting and the list is growing faster and faster every year, which is a testament to the great work being done by the teams responsible for the mission. As of right now, the next step in the test mission will be taking place in 2025, which will hopefully reveal more candidates for planets. In our number 8 spot today, we have Ahuna Mons. In 2015, during the time of NASA's Dawn mission, this little orbiter made a startling discovery near the equator of a dwarf planet called Cirrus. This discovery came in the shape of a volcano sort of mountain that was later revealed by NASA to be a cryovolcano that, when active, releases frigid, salty water sometimes mixed with mud in place of the molten lava that we see on an Earth-style volcano. In the photos of the volcano, you can see these super interesting bright streaks that run down the sides, which experts say are salt deposits that are left over from the formation of it. It is said that basically plumes of salt water and mud rose up and erupted from the planet, which punctured the surface and created the mountain we can see now. Perhaps not the scariest thing on this list, but seeing how differently other worlds formed to ours always leaves me with so many questions. In our number 7 spot today we have Mount St. Helens. Over 40 years have passed since the huge, devastating eruption of Mount St. Helens that truly changed the landscape of the Pacific Northwest for hundreds of miles. While this may not have been the most huge and devastating blast ever in the history of the Earth, the thing that sets this one apart is the technology we have available to us now. Since the eruption, experts and researchers have been able to obtain the satellite imagery from the days around the eruption, which occurred on May 18, 1980. This imagery came from the Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite 3, and this was very, very useful because rather than a land satellite, which follows a predetermined ground track in order to collect imagery from the entire planet, this satellite provides a constant view of the same area, which is normally great for monitoring weather, but this time it just allowed us to see one of the worst eruptions in US history unfold. In our number 6 spot today we have the Tonga eruption. Speaking of volcanic eruptions, there are some incredibly terrifying images that were captured of the Tonga volcanic eruption that occurred just recently. This powerful underwater volcano eruption unleashed a force that was equivalent to 4 to 18 megatons of TNT. It blanketed the island nation of Tonga in ash, it sent tsunami waves across the world, and it even sent ripples through Earth's ionosphere, the outer layer of the atmosphere. The same sort of satellite used to capture the imagery of Mount St. Helens, the one that examines the same area, also were able to capture the Tonga eruption, and it truly shows you just how powerful the blast really is. You can see very clearly the umbrella cloud, you can see shock waves and even lightning strikes. These images are a terrifying reminder of just 
just how devastating these blasts can be, while there is little to nothing that we can do to stop it. In our number 5 spot today we have Tilly the Turtle. Apparently this is now just a list of volcano related satellite imagery, but I swear this one was so interesting I had to share it with you. So it is again related to the Tonga volcano, but it involves a little turtle named Tilly. So, Tilly was rescued a few years ago after being stuck in a net with no hope of survival, and she was brought to a special rehabilitation center to help her recover. In November of 2020, Tilly was ready to be released back into her proper home, so she was tagged with a special transmitter and released at Flynn Reef, just off the coast of Cairns. Once released, Tilly began her journey east towards the Pacific Islands, and since she had that little tracker on her, her journey could be watched. This is where the satellite imagery comes in. The citizens of the Great Barrier Reef tracking map shows that Sweet Tilly traveled 1,867 kilometers over 47 days, but then, just two days before the Tonga eruption, seemingly out of nowhere, she made a huge U-turn and started heading back towards the Queensland coast. Tilly knew something was about to happen. Jenny Gilbert from the rehabilitation center where Tilly recovered said, quote, she was obviously feeling something, there must have been vibrations, and she has turned around and started heading back towards Queensland. You hear about these stories, particularly with tsunamis, where animals try to start getting themselves out of the danger zone. I've never seen it happen before, and I think it's just incredible. This might be more fascinating than unsettling, but it just reminds us of how brilliant the animals we share the earth with really are. And while we are rightfully concerned about the humans who were affected by this eruption, it also must have been pretty terrifying for the animals in the area as well. All around, just a horrible situation. In our number four spot today, we have GSN 06. I think we can all agree that getting close to a black hole would be an exceptionally terrifying experience for anyone, especially considering a brush with one is likely to mark the end of an object's journey, but that isn't always the case. In the galaxy that we refer to as GSN 069, there is a star that is currently orbiting a black hole and managing to survive while undergoing some pretty extreme changes. According to astronomers, this star was first a red giant when it began to approach the black hole, but as it first swept past the huge siphoning black hole ate up all of the star's outer hydrogen layers, which eventually left it as a white dwarf. Now this white dwarf has become trapped in a sort of oblong orbit around the black hole because while it's close, it's just out of reach enough that it hasn't fallen in yet. The star is at a distance of about 15 times the radius of the event horizon of the black hole, and each lap around takes about 9 hours. Another unusual thing about this orbit is due to the gravity of the black hole, which is of course going to have a major influence, each time the star orbits, it's being flung in a slightly different direction, which means that its orbit rotates over time and it ends up resembling a sort of rosette. In our number 3 spot today we have Kepler 78b. Kepler 78b is an exoplanet that finds its cozy home orbiting around the star called Kepler 78. Its first discovery came in 2013 by the Kepler Space Telescope and upon discovery, it was thought that this exoplanet was the most similar to Earth because of its mass, radius and mean density. It's a terrestrial planet, it likely has an iron core, what more could we look for in a planet? Well, we could definitely look for one that isn't hellishly hot like this one. This exoplanet orbits around its parent star once every eight and a half hours and it's super close to it. Like I'm talking 40 times closer to its star than Mercury is to our sun. That's way too close. Kepler 78b likes to feature a temperature of around 2030 to 2800 30 degrees Celsius, which would likely be a little uncomfortable. The temperature is high enough that it has stripped the planet of any stable atmosphere, and it is said that instead of being an Earth-like planet, Kepler 78b is more like a lava planet. To put an even more interesting twist on this wild, hot exoplanet, according to the astronomer Dimitar Sasilov from the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, quote, this lava world is an abomination. There's no physical way a small world, only 12% larger than Earth could have evolved in that location and there's no known mechanism that could have transported it there. But one thing that is certain, it can't stay roasting in that hellish orbit for long. It's destined to get swallowed by its star very soon. Right now, it is estimated that Kepler 78b is going to be swallowed by a star in about 3 billion years, which is just another reason we can cross it off our list for Earth 2.0. In our number 2 spot today, we have ESO 593 IG008. This is a discovery that first came 
came with the Hubble Space Telescope and it showed us one thing, but when re-examined later with the ESO's very large telescope, it showed us more details. With the Hubble images, ESO 593IG008 was previously known as a pair of interacting galaxies at a distance of 650 million light years. One is a spiral galaxy while the other is more irregular, and while this is already supremely interesting, the VLT images revealed quite the surprise. This surprise came in the way of a third, clearly separate, massive galaxy that seems to be forming stars as frantically as possible. Some areas of these colliding galaxies are moving faster than 400 kilometers a second, and it's said that seeing three galaxies of this size merging is something that is quite rare. While it is very unsettling to think of a three galaxy collision, the imagery from it is absolutely stunning. In our number one spot today, we have the Super Void. This is a discovery that was first seen by NASA's WMAP satellite in 2004, and it was later confirmed in 2013 by the ESA's Planck mission. Basically, there's a cold spot in the universe which could be seen clearly in the radiation left from the Big Bang, and we aren't quite sure what it is or what it means. Throughout the years, every time we've attempted to remap the cosmic microwave background with more resolution and better technology than we previously had, one of the mysteries that always remains is the cold spot, and it gets more peculiar every time. Quite recently, a new theory that could possibly explain the cold spot was put forward, and at the moment, it seems like it's a theory that most people are agreeing with. Basically, it has to do with a super void. The cosmic web is made up of clusters and super clusters of galaxies, and they are pulled to each other by gravity, of course, and sometimes they are accelerated away from each other by the mysterious, not quite understood force that is dark energy. Between these clusters of galaxies are what are called voids, the areas that contain fewer galaxies, which in turn means they contain less matter. So basically, there's a super void, one of the largest known to humanity, and it's located within the constellation of Eridanus. It's a massive, elongated, cigar-shaped void that's just a cool 1.8 billion light years wide, and it's said that it contains 30% less matter than the surrounding galactic regions. It is thought that perhaps this huge super void might be responsible for the cold spot, but at this point, there are still tons of questions that are just waiting to be answered. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time.